I wanted to, uh, to make a little bit of retrospective on the build system uh, and to, uh, to explain uh, also what we are doing now uh, <coughs> and uh, some of the changes that are, uh, that are coming. So uh, all the work that I've done with, uh, in, the, in the build system has received support uh, for at one time or another from many, many uh, things and uh, from many sources and uh, collaboration has, uh, has been uh, really uh, a critical aspect. And also along the, all these years of development, uh, something uh, that uh, we have all uh, had to, uh, to deal with is uh, technical debt. So <coughs> I will explain uh, briefly what it is and what it is not and uh, give, give you some examples going uh, more and more towards the build system and at the end I will uh, show uh, what we are doing uh, right now to, uh, to address it. So uh, uh, a misconception, a frequent misconception is that uh, technical debt is something which is bad. So I would say mm, not, not necessarily. And uh, so because what it is, is uh, we avoid uh, to do some work today uh, by promising it to do it tomorrow. And uh, usually you do it because the benefit you will get from what you will do now uh, will be uh, better than the burden that it will cost you uh, to fix it afterwards. So you have basically three types of uh, technical debt. Uh, one is deliberate. So you make a strategic uh, choice uh, or tactical choice. And uh, of course, you must track, uh, track it in a way or another. So for example, if you use Git and GitLab, it can be through issues, merge requests, etc. cetera. Uh, <coughs> technical debt can also be accidental. Uh, at some point, you are implementing something and it reveals a flow in the design that you uh, had thought about before. And so this also you, you have to address. And the third time, which is often uh, neglected, it's called the bit rot, is that when you persist in doing things uh, when you should change. And so I will show some examples of, uh, of all of these uh, types. And also what I, um, what I want to is insist also is that uh, technical debt is not, uh, has nothing to do with uh, bad programming practices or procrastination or things like that. You, uh, you, you can have a lot of technical debt and still be very committed to quality. And this is, uh, and uh, yes, also yeah, I, I was quoting here the rush to keyboard syndrome. Uh, this is also a bad programming practice when you have an idea and you rush to the keyboard before even thinking about how to implement it, uh, which I've seen a lot of times. <coughs> so um, a few uh, basic advice uh, to avoid to avoid having too much technical debt and to keep it uh, all, always deliberate is uh, to take some time when you have an idea to design. And uh, of course, if you can collaborate and discuss with other people, in particular, if they have a different background than yours, it's, uh, it's even better. Uh, also commit to refactor periodically your code. And if you can also implement some uh, techniques inspired from, uh, for example, test-driven development, where you first write a test and you then implement uh, the things until the test uh, succeeds. So this helps you a lot if you are not sure uh, how to start uh, to design uh, your, your implementation. So <coughs> the typical uh, sources of uh, technical debt are uh, when you, you start to do something and the efforts will take some time and during this effort your understanding of it uh, will uh, evolve and at some point you realize that you, uh, what you have done in a certain way uh, you will have to do it uh, in a different way uh, to, to be able to continue or if not your development will slow down or be hindered or limited. You have changes in context uh, for example uh, evolution of Fortran standards or people switching for front from, from Fortran to C++, uh, going from Python 2 to Python 3. Uh, for example, the, the, the scheduled death of Python 2 uh, suddenly uh, made uh, all Python 2 code uh, become technical debt. Uh, you have also things 
okay, related in, in this case, uh, the, the, in the case of Bazaar, which was developed in Python 2 and was abandoned. Uh, you, it becomes also a technical debt, even if it's not directly, uh, in this case, uh, related with the development, internal development of Abinit. And uh, also changes in philosophies. Uh, 20 years ago, uh, there was a lot of uh, thinking around the uh, code silos. So you, you were developing in parallel uh, different codes and they were doing the same mistakes and uh, fixing the same bugs. And now we, uh, we share a lot more. So we have a lot of more collaboration. And uh, so this also uh, makes things that were developed with the previous philosophy uh, become technical debt. And uh, an important aspect that we have tried to address uh, for, uh, for quite a few years now uh, in, um, in Abinit is uh, availability of people and uh, avoid single point of failures. And I mean things that depend uh, only on one person to, be, uh, to continue to evolve. And, um, <coughs> and also some, some, uh, some things uh, can also go um, beyond their uh, original purpose. So we have been discussing over the, the last couple of years uh, a lot of things about MPIIO and the, fall the Abinit fallbacks originally were absolutely not designed for this and uh, they, uh, the way they are designed uh, is not able to handle the, the, the complexity uh, of uh, depending on HGF5 which is for, for parallel I.O. Uh, efficiently. So I will, uh, I will also uh, show, um, so, <coughs> so when, uh, okay, when, when you, I will go briefly on this. Uh, when you have technical depth, uh, you want to, uh, to know uh, how much it will impact uh, your code and also how much it will impact your relationships with, uh, between developers, with other uh, communities and uh, also uh, evaluate the urgency of, uh, let's say, <coughs> giving back the, the, what you have uh, borrowed. <coughs> and so in, uh, in the build system, I will give uh, a few examples. So we, for a long time, we, re we relied on Abilint. And uh, so why, why uh, Abilint got there at the beginning? It was because in Fortran, you, we didn't have a way to, uh, <coughs> to get automatically the, 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 the tracking of dependencies between files. And also because a lot of uh, routines in Abinit uh, did not have any explicit Fortran interfaces. So this uh, situation can cause uh, segmentation faults, uh, so your, the program crashes, uh, or can have unpredictable uh, behaviors. So, Abilint was very useful for this, and um, uh, but uh, the price was uh, that we introduced uh, changes that was done by the computer in version files. So the, the version files, uh, the source files of Abilint, if they are versioned, ideally they should only be edited by humans, not by machines, or uh, uh, edited by machines in very specific circumstances, for example in a beautification. And uh, it didn't have any Fortran 2003 support, so it started to uh, give a lot of problems when, uh, when we put uh, Fortran 2003 constructs. And um, it was also complex and single-threaded, so it means that difficult to uh, modify. Uh, and um, also it became slower and slower as Abinid Abili uh, grew. <coughs> So this um, basically it become uh, a deliberate uh, from a deliberate uh, technical debt, it become an accidental one, and at the end we were at the limit of getting uh, bit rot because Abilint was uh, not maintained anymore. Basically, <coughs> so now it has been replaced by uh, Abisource, and uh, so we can go to and through another cycle of uh, technical debt <laughs> with this. But which is this time, uh, for the moment, fully del deliberate. And uh, so Bazaar also uh, something uh, similar happened. Uh, Bazaar was chosen uh, because 
<coughs> CVS and Subversion, for example, as uh, version control systems were completely insufficient for Labinit. And uh, Basar had, had the big advantage, it was, it was user-friendly and easy to learn. And uh, it was also, uh, uh, we took some risk with it uh, because uh, it was immature when we adopted it. And, uh, <coughs> and the, uh, the first version, which was called Baz, that some of you uh, have known, uh, was written in C, then it was written in uh, Python 2, and uh, then it was abandoned. And so, uh, the, although it was something completely external uh, to, to have in it, uh, it uh, relying on it became uh, technical debt. So, <coughs> the, the third uh, example I have is, is the fallback. Is at the beginning uh, when uh, uh, Abinit was uh, uh, released with the dependencies inside and um, the, the problem of Fortran modules is that they, they were giving uh, a lot of incompatibilities and um, developers needed uh, help to manage all, all these things. <coughs> and uh, so as a temporary solution until we find something better uh, the, a part of Abinit was segregated and uh, compiled before, as probably most, mm, most of you have, uh, have used. And uh, so the price to pay was uh, we, have to find, we, we had to find a consistent set of versions for all these uh, dependencies. And they, they were that they were uh, heterogeneous, different languages, different standard uh, versions. And uh, we never uh, have run explicitly the, the test suite of the individual projects. And uh, uh, social consequence of this is that they were break breaking feedback uh, loops. And uh, now, even if it's still distributed with the, the, the trunk, so the, the version that you have in the trunk now is a bit outdated, but uh, soon uh, there will be a, a snapshot of uh, what is now a standalone package which is a step in uh, removing the technical depth uh, related to the fallbacks. So I will, uh, I, I don't have much time left, so I will uh, switch uh, now to, the, um, to what I wanted to, to show you. So for the, the build system, this has uh, been uh, constant, uh, adapt, uh, adapting constantly to, uh, to all the changes that, uh, that were inside and outside Abinit. I've led at some point <coughs> because also uh, uh, other projects started to rely on, Ab on Abinit and uh, in a way uh, that uh, caused some problems. So the, the biggest one was BigDFT, which imported into their source code the, uh, the low level part of Abinit. So what we got is a, a namespace clash uh, uh, because Big DFT was taking something from Abinit, and then Abinit was using Big DFT to do calculations based on wavelets. And so you had the typical duplicate symbol definition uh, that the compilers did not want to, uh, to deal with. And <coughs> we, uh, we tried to, uh, to go through different steps to, uh, to solve this. And uh, so we, uh, we arrived uh, at the, the current uh, merge request oh, sorry. that we have now. So uh, this is the, the source code uh, of Amelit in my branch. So you, before, uh, before that, you had all the source of Abinit into the SRC uh, subdirectory. And you see that uh, once this merge request is uh, uh, accepted, uh, it will start at 41 geometry. And the rest will be in a shared part, so which will allow us to have a common uh, part of Abinit between, um, a common part between Abinit and Big DFT and also uh, a part of Abinit that uh, is uh, able to work uh, standalone, which is the, the, the libpow, the, so the PAW uh, routines, that, uh, that can already be, uh, distributed and be distributed outside Abinit and which uh, is already used by uh, another project. 
so this uh, this split uh, what it will do it it will allow us to uh, first compile the command and lipo uh, part of abinit then on top of this we can compile uh, a clean version of big dft that has the abinit uh, low level symbols removed and on top of that we can compile the core of abinit uh, with uh, the wavelet features uh, activated but still this allows if you don't need big dft this allows to, to still compile everything in one shot. You, you will just see that the, the compilation will go through more uh, directories than before. So this, of course, will introduce a bit uh, a new kind of complexity, but uh, this is also the, the, the trade-off to go from, in this case, an, an accidental um, <coughs> technical debt to uh, deliberate one. And uh, to finish, I just wanted to present uh, <coughs> the, uh, the ESL bundle. So this is uh, uh, what I hope will become uh, one of the replacements for the Abinit fallbacks. So in the electronic structure library, which is a collaboration between uh, various uh, developer groups, we, uh, we want to address the problem of the dependency hell as, as uh, well as we can. <coughs> and so uh, the ESL bundle is a set of libraries which have been tested uh, and brought together uh, so that you can uh, build uh, codes on top of it. And uh, already on, on, on top of the ESL bundle, I've been able to find a way to, um, <coughs> to keep synchronized with this uh, project and have uh, Abinit and Siesta specific bundles. So that's it. Thank you.